if I had to think of a song about darling, I would say, oh, oh, my darling, that song. Don't, don't quote me, because I can't sing. <laughs> oh, me darling, oh, me darling, that one. <laughs> I can't sing. <laughs> my name is Nina Poole. Uh, we're in Darling, um, down the west coast of, from Cape Town. If someone's never heard of Darling before, my first question is, where have you been? Uh, Darling is in the Swatland region. It's a gem of a place. It's off the R27. It's absolutely, I don't want to say a hidden gem because it's a literal gem. It's got so much to offer. It's got culture, it's got a heritage, and it's got people. It's got, it's the good life. It's good food, good people, and obviously good wine. What more do you want? And if that's not enough of a selling point, man, you're missing out on life. My name is Peter Pence, I'm the Communications Manager here at Credit Force Vineyards. Uh, together with my father uh, and grandfather, we are currently three Pence generations on Credit Post. Land owned by one of the Van Rienens, I think it was. He donated that to the Dutch Reformed Church to, for a church to be built and they also made a town around it. The big thing being there was a, a fountain there at the top end of the town, where the pastorie is now, uh, which fed the town with water. So it became like an official town in 1853 and they named it after this. The governor of the Cape at the time, Lord Charles Henry Darling. I'm, I'm John Duckett and we're here on Wayland's Farm, just outside of Darling, about an hour's drive from Cape Town. I think Darling has always been a farming town. You know, it's where farmers come and get their supplies and so on. And you have a doctor and a post office and a hardware store and a cafe and a hotel. Um, and that's been pretty much what Darling has remained uh, all, uh, you know, all, all this time. My name is Nicolas Maritz. I am a painter and I live in Darling. You get out here and you, and you, and you find those hidden gems. The wine farms are amazing. Um, you know, there's just so many amazing places to spend time and, and slow time. <laughs> Not rushing through Darling. Um, um, stopping, getting out your car and enjoying and engaging with the community of Darling and then I think you get to see Darling really shine. I'm Philippa Wood and we are here at Living Colour in Darling. So South Afrikaners hou baie van beskyt en dit is so'n typische ding van Zuid-Afrika. Maar as het kom by die mense van Darling, dan kan ek nie net denk aan een type beskyt wat daai mense sal kan definieer nie. Het is meer een geval van, dat is iets van alles. Van die beskyt wat geen suiker in het nie, tot die lekker soetste beskyt wat jy kan kry. Ek is Henty van der Merwe en ons opdaling by Ibitasse Peron. Ibitasse Peron het Peterburg Ijs begin in die vroege neentigs en dit is a, uiteindelijk een cultural center, een culturele centrum, een hoofdzakelijke theater wat Peterburg Ijs al die jare gebruik het vir sy tanne Ibita besuidende karakter. Yeah, Credit Post got a very special story. It comes back from the VOC days when this was actually a halfway post um, between Cape Town and Saldana Bay where they, they used to stop and get refreshments. And these were called outposts. And of these outposts, this was the biggest post, the Grote Post, Grote Post as we know it. So yeah, and this uh, building which hosts our cellar at the moment is an old fort that was used back in the day and it's also a national heritage monument. Everything dates back to 1904, when my uh, great, great, great grandfather, he was uh, a big milkman in the Tukai area. And uh, my grandfather took over, and at a time we actually moved out to Darling with a, with, a, with a dairy. And slowly but surely we planted some vineyards. And then at a stage, uh, my granddad made the big decision to move over from milk to wine. And uh, here we are today, it's, uh, we've bottled our first wine, 1999. I never looked back. Uh, my grandfather always says, um, no one's ever come up to him and said he, they had a bloody good glass of milk last night from him. So with the wine, it quite actually happens. So yeah, we're on the West Coast. I was driving Cape Town, um, lovely farm offering wine tastings. We do game drives, we've got a restaurant. So it's really a tourist attraction for the entire family. The first time I, I drove into Darling, I have to say that I was actually quite amazed. Uh, amazed that it wasn't beautiful. It's not a beautiful town at all. It's a farm, a farm town. So there's 
plenty of people come in and say, why don't you fix up this street and fix up that street? You've got to start looking like Franschuk. We don't need to do that because it's the people in Darling. It's the farmers, workers, it's the wine farmers, it's the milk, Darling milk, all those people. That's what Darling is. It's a huge community and they all try to work together. We're sitting at the Old Forge, 1910, the Old Forge. It's an old, was an old derelict barn uh, four years ago. And we, we bought it um, recently, five years ago, to renovate. My husband did all the work completely. And um, Darling needed another restaurant. There's, there's pizza places, there's cafeterias, but no restaurants as such that are open in the evenings. So we one that's opened in the evenings. Um, we, we took it on and so far so good, very happy. Our best dishes here, we do seafood, quite a lot of seafood. Um, there's no seafood in Darling, strangely enough, even though we're on the west coast. We only use fresh produce in Darling. We, we use the Darling milk, the Darling cream, the Darling yogurt. We all our greens, our vegetables and stuff, we buy from a farmer in Darling. All our salad leaves and flowers for our drinks also come from a farmer in Darling. So mussels are from up the road. The only thing that isn't fresh produce as far as local is our seafood that we bring in. So it's not from local except for the mussels. Living colour is here. Yeah, us as a family, we always trying to think of ways to spend our weekends. Where's, where can we go where everyone's going to be happy? Living Colour is about exactly that, living every day, making sure you're maximising on your weekend and that when you get there, everybody's enjoying themselves. So Living Colour, living not in black and white, basically. <laughs> I think a lot of people think that Darling's flat, um, especially if you just had to drive through the village. And then I think if you get into this part of Darling, you'll, you'll realise that it's definitely not, especially if you do it on a bike or in some running shoes. Um, but what I love about this spot is that a lot of people, locals, have driven past this exact spot and said they've never really appreciated its beauty. And now that we've framed it, they're like, wow, it's such a beautiful spot. So um, what I love about this venue is that for all the beauty that Darling has, there could be more places where you can sit and have a good view. And I think that's really what people love, sit and have something beautiful to look at. So I love the view from our stop here. Um, but yeah, Darling itself, the landscape, it's, um, it's dry, but you can enjoy it. <laughs> it's beautiful. I mean, uh, I think you do see all the different seasons. We're very excited to see what our garden's going to look like now when all the rain starts. We've been working really hard on it um, because Darling obviously just absolutely, when we built this place, the entire place was built in these tiny little yellow flowers, which are absolutely beautiful. So I can't wait to see what it's going to look like. But having said that, I mean, I think this time of year has also got its own beauty and, and hopefully it can always be appreciated for, for the landscape. The landscape's amazing, um, but yeah, this time of year, obviously, <laughs> very dry. Living Colour is a trail centre that's five kilometres outside Darling toward the Aisfontaine direction. And we are a trail centre with 25 kilometres of walking, running and cycling and a restaurant with loads for the kids to do. The whole district is really that of a mixed, mixed agriculturally is a mixed area, but it also means from in the felt perspective, the felt is then a, um, uh, is probably one of the richer areas within the Cape Flora as far as flora is concerned. I know there are something like 12, there's 15,000 species of wildflowers in the Western Cape flora. And of those, I think a thousand, at least 1,200. I know Rondeberg that they did a thing that they found 1,200 species of flowering plants on Rondeberg. And that, now if you take that as being sort of an average, the darling is about um, 85,000 hectares. The Cape Flora is about 85,500 um, square kilometers. Uh, what one hundredth of the area has 10% of the flora. And 
um, and that's huge. If you think about the Amazon Basin, which has 850,000 square kilometers, has 800 species of flowering plants in it. Uh, and that is a, reckoned to be a, a floristically rich area. I mean, they just don't compare to Darling. I was born with a brush in my mouth, and um, it's not something you can deny. It, it takes hold of you, and that, uh, you, become, you become the artist. It's a calling. Um, if I could have rather chosen something that would have made me rich, I may have thought differently when I started out, but uh, you know, so far, so good. Um, yeah, it's difficult to it's difficult for an artist to say what they do specifically by way of description. You know, I can give a uh, a physical description of it. So I do painting. At the moment, I'm very uh, involved with sculptures, or making sculpture, three dimensional work. And um, I suppose I'm better known as a painter of, say, landscapes, Cape landscapes or Namibian landscapes. This, this property started as my living accommodation. And then I thought, well, I better turn it into a gallery. Um, which sounds as if people can come here and buy something maybe um, and then after a while it became so full of things or you know over years that i thought this place is becoming to look it's beginning to look like a museum but it's a joke really it's a, it's slightly satirical i suppose the idea of a museum is also that many people think only very valuable things are museum worthy um, but I don't think so I think um, almost anything can be in a museum it doesn't have to have monetary value so uh, a kilom carpet or a nice piece of stinkwood furniture or a nice piece of ceramic way by a local potter or something like that which appeals to me and fits into my idea of what is beautiful, say. Um, I think that's worth including or showing in a museum. People experience this place as a museum or they can't see it at all. Do you know what I mean? They come in here, they can't see the fact that it's a museum. Okay, I can fit it to a year of the year that I've been here. En um, ons het het ons gebruik het hoofdzakelijk as die van ons bakkerij vir die Swartland Kitchen um, beskyt en koekie reeks wat ons uh, so jaar en half gelede begin het. En ons het nog steeds die Tani Vita shows elke zondag en ons het ook een fine dining restaurant, Kossi Sikilela, wat vrijdag, zaterdag en zondag oop is en dan die café wat mens elke dag kan lichte etens geniet. So, ons begin in die ochtend is so 8 uur kan te bak. Ons is so span van 6 vrouwens van die plaaslike gemeenskap. En die, die reek van die beskyt, die reële perron is net fantastisch. Mense wat die inkom is net malle oor. En dit inspireer hulle net. En die ding is van beskyt, is so typies as Afrikaanse ding. So, wanneer mense elke dag beskyt bak, voel jy jouself raarig deel van een traditie wat al baie, baie jare oud, oud is. Ochtend as ek werk toe stap, die die strate van Daling, as ek het ek altijd so rustigheid aan my, want die, die dorp is so rustig en daar is ook die landelijke gevoel aan die dorp. Maar toch, hier so by Achierse kant, raak dit lekker levendig, soos typische dorp moet wees, een werkende dorp. En het die lekker energie van Daling wat, wat inspirerend is. <laughs> it would be rude to say, if the people of Darling were a trail, it would be very rude to say they're a park run. So um, I've got a, an event coming up, the Yonkers Hook Mountain Challenge. Darling people would be, no, you know what, people of Darling, they make a plan, they make things work. I mean, I think 
where Dialing is at the moment with all, as I've mentioned before, the amazing entrepreneurs. I think we are a fabulous, fabulous town that, that um, yeah, we're ever changing. Um, and whatever the, the mountain is, we get up it and we enjoy the, down, the downhill when it comes. But yeah, I think we would be a mountain challenge and not a park run. <laughs> I think if you need to compare Darling to Hawaii and the people of it, it's quite a difficult question and probably a daunting question because the answers might differ. But I think the answer is quite simple. It's Sauvignon Blanc. Not just because of the fact that Sauvignon Blanc does well in, in, in Darling and Sauvignon Blanc is a top cultivar in South Africa. It's got layers of fruit. It's got layers of, of structure to it. It's, it's, it's quality. It's good. It's the favorite varietal of South Africa. So make your own assumptions what I'm trying to do with that. But people love it. Uh, it's well accepted everywhere. It's classy. It's just, nah. I mean, more than that, have a glass of Sauvignon Blanc. Think about what I said about Darling and you'll see the connection. It's a kind of paradise, a kind of Eden, but it's got its own description. It, it, it is not a paradise like elsewhere. I think the only um, similar area in the world is maybe the west coast of America, sort of California or, you know, the west coast of Australia. It's got a west coast feeling. Um, it's not the prettiest of places, but it is very livable and very rewarding. And just lately, I must say that the best champagne that you could possibly wish to taste comes from some of the local wine estates. I mean, there are three estates now making uh, champagne, you know, Cup Classic uh, champagne. And it is fantastic and it is uh, reasonably priced. So, um, yeah, I, Darling keeps getting better. The beauty of the trails out in the Swatlands is the absolute deafening silence that we can have out there. And the beauty of the Swatlands. Climbs and hills that you never even imagined were there with views of the sea, views of Table Mountain, and just beauty and space and skies for days. There's a Charles Backhouse, he was a guy that, that uh, rode around the Western Cape here in the early times of the English settlement here. Um, he said there are no flowers like those in Dali. I think there's lots of misconceptions about uh, small plotland dorpies. I think it's time to break them. It's time for people to come out and see the true plotland and what they've got to offer. Come see what true country hospitality is. Come see what's fine dining and come experience the good life. You know you're on a great adventure when the first person you bump into says, hello darling. <laughs>